Sometimes we have to wait for a big thing to happen in our life for us to change and be motivated. Some people go to, to jail, to prison, and get out five years later with, a, with education. Some people have a great accident, and right now we're, we go through these challenging times, and, and we go through these great changes. And a lot of people are getting frustrated looking at the internet and people saying, if you haven't come out of this with a new skill, a new trade, a new language, you haven't created a book or something like that, something's wrong with you. And I saw a post one day saying, um, well, I'm tired of hearing that stuff. I'm, I just don't know what to do. I'm not motivated or whatever it may be. I want to encourage you today because getting away from, from that typical life that you do have or that typical thing, I mean, you weren't a motivated person before and now you're thrown into these times. You're, you're challenged with a lot of different circumstances. You may be home with your kids, you may be home around your wife, whatever circumstance you're in. I mean, just now I try to shoot this video. This is a, a video rant and and as I was shooting, <laughs> um, I got disturbed twice and I lost my focus and then I just stopped the video. So I said, you know what, let me come sit in my car and do this same video, just do the video over. Just adjust and adapt. I remember once I heard this story about this person who, who lost a lot of weight and they start encouraging a lot of people by by hanging in there and being focused and, and really getting in shape and getting healthy. And the into the interviewer asked the person, well, how long did it take for you to to lose this weight? And they, they thought about it and said, well, you know what? It, it took me about five minutes. And the reporter was saying, well, how can it take five minutes to lose 100 pounds? They said, well, I sat down one day and decided I do not like my life. I do not like the way I look. And it took me five minutes to make that that decision. It's a funny story is connected to this because one day I was walking through the airport and this little child, you know, being what children are and what children do do, this child said, Mommy, what? look at that fat person over there. And um, the person was looking in my direction and I turned and looked myself and I, I, I laughed and I said, well, you know what? That's interesting because I was the fat person the child was looking at. And the reason why I turned, because in my mind, I was not that fat person anymore. In my mind, I already made that decision to, to get in shape, to get healthy, become, to get fit, whatever it, it may be. So I was not that person anymore. From that day forward, I was on a journey. I was on a journey to become that healthy person, that fit person, however you want to see it. But in my mind, I created something in my mind. And... Sometimes you have to create those things in your mind. That is where the journey starts. I remember once when at the beginning of my entrepreneurial journey, I I knew what I wanted to do from from there a long time ago. Unusual because most people do not go through a journey like that, but exactly one year I in 1990 I can't remember exactly when it was, but it was in the 90s, late 90s. I decided I'm going to go into business a year later. I was a technician and I got a job, was a job available to go in sales. And I said, I know I need to go into sales now to get my feet wet, to start my journey to be an entrepreneur on my own. So I went into, I got the position and the day, um, the day I got the job, I decided that one year, exactly one year later, I will quit my job in sales and start my own business and I did do that and in my mind I knew that I was gonna start my own business <laughs> what I was gonna sell I didn't know how how I was gonna do it I didn't know where I was gonna get the money from to start this I did not know is is I just started that journey and sometimes like my wife asked about Taryn you're, you're always motivated you're always focused and I said no I'm not I'm not always motivated. I'm not always focused. I started this new um, new business of full-time coaching. I've been coaching people forever, but I decided to go full-time. And all of a sudden, a month after I went full-time, the world changed. How am I to stay motivated? How am I to stay focused? How am I to get clients when everything started to change? When you're on that journey, let's say, for instance, I remember I was on a journey of trying to do 100 push-ups and I started that journey and I said where am I going to start I'm going to start with one push-up now see exercise and, and, and that journey in life is all the same thing you start with one push-up you start with 
one video, like this video post, you start with one. I'm encouraging people to in business, some people that I coach to to start their business page, their business Facebook page. First part of the journey is to post in the business page, static posts, that's just pictures. Second part of the the um, journey is put video. Third part of the post, sorry, the journey is to do live video. It's a journey you do one step at a time. You get stronger and stronger and stronger. And you, you go on what, you build on what you do know. And that's how it is when you're on this journey. You're on this journey to get bigger clients, to get better clients, to get some clients. And my wife asked me, well, I always say what my journey is, I'm just trying to get one client. That's all I keep saying. I'm trying to get one client. Guess what? After I get one client, my goal is to get one client. And so the goal is always to get one client. If I had a thousand clients, and what's my goal? My goal is to get one client. So now I have a thousand and one client. So now I'm always focusing on that next one client. I'm learning um, so much being a coach. Great coaches get coached. That's that's what's so funny about this. Great coaches get coached. And one of the things I have learned, one of the most important things I have learned in being coached is you always concentrate on what is at hand or that thing right in front of you. You do not concentrate on anything else but that thing right in front of you. What do I mean by that? Let's look at the great game of football, soccer, as some people call it. The great game of, of soccer the the goal is in the end zone and the your team is in your is in your defensive zone some they're trying to score and get get a goal what is your first objective your first objective at this point in time is to get the ball away from your team i mean sorry away from the opposition get the ball or actually sorry more so stop them once you stop them then the first objective is to get the ball the second objective is to pass the ball to your opponent your teammates so you pass the ball to your teammates so you can get it out of the end zone the objective is not to score it is not to score at all it's to pass it and get out of your end zone once you get it out of your end zone the next objective is to take it up the field not to score Everybody is focusing on scoring all the time. That is not the objective. When you're in sales, what's the objective? Let's say a retail outlet. When someone walks into the door, what is your first, first objective? Is it to make a sale? No, it is not. Your first objective is to greet them. Good morning, good evening, good night. How are you doing? Um, how can I help you today? Is there anything I can help you with? They say yes, they say no. You're not Your next objective is based on the question they give you. Now, in internet sales, it's exactly the same thing. The first objective is to get them to look at your content. They look at your content, they go, wow. Second objective, to click on your content. So it is actually to get the click, not to get the sale. The third objective may be to get their email. See, it is, you always look at the objective right in front of you. Look at painting the house. You, you decide on the color, you decide on everything. What's the first objective now? The first objective is to get money to pay for the product. You got the money. The next objective is decide on the store you're going to to get the product. So it's always looking at the objective right in front of you. A lot of businesses are not looking at the immediate objective and they get lost and clouded and, and, and lost in the muck and mire of what's got to be done in business. In my concept of coaching, I always ask the person right up front, what are you trying to do? What specifically are you trying to achieve? Well, you know, I'm really trying to get more money. I'm trying to make more sales. What does that mean? You're trying to make my, more money, more sales? Well, okay, fine. Um, pay me all this money and I can help you make more sales. I can help you make more sales in a week. There you go. We made one more sale. Goal is completed. No, I need to make 10% more sales in three months. I need to make $100,000 in three months. I need 10 more clients in three months. You have to think specific objective. Once you think specific objectives, then you think about what you have to achieve and what you have to accomplish. You deal with things one 
at a time. And once you deal with, look at things one at a time and look at one objective at a time, then you stack the one objective to the next objective and the next objective. And before you know it, you got 10, if not 20 different points, but you're always concentrating on the first objective, the objective at hand. And that's what business is all about. That's what life is all about. Don't try to, don't always look at the end objective at any given time. Look at the objective at hand, the objective right in front of you. Then you can get to those 100 push-ups. Then you can get those, to those 300 sales. Then you can get to that weight loss or that, that fitness gain. Then you can get to that point in life. If you're always looking at the overall objective, you can get overwhelmed and discouraged. And every now and then, you got to look away from your goals. Look away and do something else. This morning, I got up and went for a walk. I, I've been trying to walk every day, come back, and then do my other um, ed exercise. I decided today not to do the other exercises after the walk. I'm going to do them throughout the day. So when I do that, I usually do 30 seconds an exercise switch and do another 30 seconds another exercise. I think it's 15 exercises. I did absolutely none. So I, because I decided to, to do them throughout the day or at a different portion of the day, I'm not going to do 30 seconds. I'm going to do one minute instead. So I switched it around, around to entertain myself or some days you just got to do absolutely nothing go watch a movie read a book go spend time with the kids or friends and forget about those things those goals those just so that you can relax your mind you're human my goodness you can't be always pushing 24 7 you've got to relax you've got to enjoy life you've got to give yourself a break even computers uh, are given downtime they um, shut off, people shut the server off and refresh it, clean it up, do whatever they got to do. I'm not a computer tech, but they turn it off to, to refresh. They turn it off to um, make it better. Every now and then, you've got to turn yourself off to make yourself better. This is just a rant if you get to the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If not, um, not. <laughs> you know what's funny about these videos is most of the time you're not doing them for people even though I hope that people will watch them get encouraged get educated and grow and move their business forward forward in the end of course my objective is to get clients go to terrencedouglas.com and you can schedule an appointment there but ultimately my main objective actually is to find my voice to learn how to articulate what I already know a lot of times I use, I always say, if you do not know, you cannot say. If you do not know, you cannot say. What does that mean? Well, if I ask you, how do you spread peanut butter on bread? You go, that's easy. Get the knife, stick it in the peanut butter and spread it on the bread. No big deal. You can think of what's your name. Bam, you kick out your name one time because you know and understand. You know your name. You, you, you don't have to think about that. So in finding my voice, I want to get to a point where I don't have, do not have to think about all the tools I have. I don't have to think about all the procedures that I've learned over the years. You want to compile it and know in an instant an answer to anyone's business problem so you can um, direct them and help them to get bigger and better profits. Uh, I, I'm not about encouraging your business. Encouraging your business at the end of the day doesn't make you more revenue. I'm not about helping your business get organized getting organized doesn't help you get more revenue i'm about helping your business get more revenue so i want to be able to articulate to you in an instant what i already know and part of doing these videos it helps me to do that and helps you to get what i what i already have in my head out to my lips but anyway i hope you enjoyed this rant and that's all it is a rant today no real specific topic just getting you from bad to better to best uh, and just moving you on and moving myself on let's go on and have a great fantastic 2020 even amongst, amongst these times just because this is a temporary setback does not mean that the this year cannot be the best year you ever had humans have the tenacity to think to grow to change be one of those humans be encouraged